Hello everyone and welcome to Heart Matters. We hope that this season of celebration will truly be a great one for you and your family. No matter what restrictions are in place this year, I believe that the message of Christmas can come alive in our hearts. We have a few Christmas episodes planned for all of you this year and our hope is that we can help turn your attention to Jesus. It's easy to get caught up on all of the traditions that come with this season, but if this year has taught us anything, it's that when everything is stripped down to the essentials, we discover what is really important. On today's show, we'll hear from a woman who has suffered some hard knocks by circumstances that life has thrown her way. Listen in as Amanda Carter shares how focusing on Christ and the support of others has helped her along the way. Also joining us as today's musical guest, we're very pleased to have Crystal Snow singing a couple of songs for us today. So why not hit the pause button on everything else for the next few minutes and let the message of today's episode sink in. Enjoy the show. Heart Matters will return in just a moment. Closed captioning provided by Terry's Tints. Custom canvases, framing, embroidery, printing, craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located in Happy Valley, Goose Bay. 
White's Family Care is proudly known as Newfoundland's finest personal care home. We take pride in our home-cooked meals, giving you a choice of what you want to eat. We bring you to all your medical appointments, shopping outings, even coffee and ice cream trips. Our staff treat you like family as you overlook the beautiful Bay of Exploits. White's Family Care is the place to be. Remax would like to say thank you for allowing us to be a part of the most important transaction of your life. Our mandate is giving back to the communities that serve us. We will be honored to help you with your next move. Call any of our offices today and let one of our Remax agents go to work for you. Looking for quality products and top-notch service? From lumber to paint and refrigerators to sofa, your local Notre Dame home furnishings and Notre Dame Castle Building Centers can help you complete your home, serving you from 16 locations across Newfoundland and Labrador, six days a week. Uh, hi, my name is Amanda Carter. Uh, I'm from Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. Grade nine was when I was diagnosed with my brain tumor. So I had surgery at the end of grade nine, so it was 2004. So just had a, had a surgery to get a shunt put in, that was fine. Then my tumor started to grow. So by the time I got into grade 10, they made the decision, it was like, no, we got, we at least got to see what this is in your head. So they did a surgery to at least try to get it a biopsy. And uh, they that came back, it was a benign, low grade thing, and we're just gonna watch it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Miss, missed some school, but it was, it was okay. I had you know, good friends, good teachers, very supportive. So uh, that was really, really great. And I, yeah, it was actually the best year that I had. Knew that by then I wanted to be a nurse. So I was making my course changes so that I could get in there. Still going to a youth group, but you know, if you miss a Sunday, well, you know, who cares? It wasn't a priority anymore and didn't really read my Bible a whole lot. I think grade 12 or just after graduating high school, I'd say, is when I got into a lot of deeper depression and uh, self-harm type thing. And it was really brought me down because uh, I knew growing up it was always, you know, Christians don't get depressed. This doesn't happen to Christians. You know, you need to read your Bible. You need to pray more. That's your problem. Mental, mental illness doesn't happen to Christians. So a lot of it was, I uh, was hating myself. I was like, this is not how I'm supposed to be. So when, um, when I finally got into nursing school and we did mental health courses and everything, uh, got into talking to a lot of my instructors who uh, were actually really, really supportive. We learned, you know, self-harm is attention seeking. I was like, I'm not attention seeking. I hate it when attention is on me. I was like, I, I think I do this because I'm just so mad at myself and, and angry. My last year of nursing, second last year of nursing is when I went to Bonavista, running away from everything. And uh, we had to go away for a course, volunteer to go away, we'll give you some money. So yeah, I went to Bonavista, wasn't ever in my plan to go to church. I was gonna be my break for four weeks to sit around, escape everybody. So my pop had told me about this church, pastor that you knew, you need to go there. And I was like, yeah, right, I'm not gonna go to church. Anyways, so when I went to the nursing place where I was supposed to go with community health, I walked in and they were like, oh, the nurse you were with is gone, and uh, but there's someone else here, so don't worry about it. So they placed me with another nurse, Sherry. Every once in a while, I've noticed something different about her. 
and then uh, she'd always have her music on. So she was always singing along, and then I started to sing along. And she looked at me, she's like, are you a Christian? And I said, uh, yeah. And she said, well, why don't you tell me that? Well, it's not the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you meet a stranger. <laughs> so after that, it was, we went, I went to her church, and uh, the love that you feel from strangers who have known you for four weeks, that you see once a week, one of the most spiritual and powerful moments, uh, I would say, of my life. Uh, the pastor asked if the ladies of the church would come up and pray with me after when we were singing the last song. And uh, all the ladies came up and laid hands on me. And it was just a really, really spiritual moment. And I, I just felt so much love. Uh, so I left Bonavista on this big high that it was like, OK, I'm back with Jesus. And this is, I got I to gotta keep this going. So I uh, graduated from nursing and uh, found my dream job, what I thought, uh, here in town. And as when I started working, uh, it was just a bad environment. And there was just a lot of negative things going on there. I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, this is just really, really making my depression a lot worse. So I, uh, I went online and just applied for all these jobs. I was like, I don't care anymore where it is. Anyways, got a call for a job in Clarenville and just hoping that this was going to be a great new start. So I went to Clarenville and that was great. Met a lot of new friends. Uh, starting when I, I went to Clarenville, I guess, is when I was just getting all these weird things happen again with my head. I was like, this is, I went to them, I was like, this is what it was like when my brain tumor was, was growing. I was like, and this is what it was like when my shunt got infected one time. I was like, this is exactly what it's like. The tests kept on coming up negative and they didn't know what to do. Everyone just kept putting me off. Oh no, the tests are negative. Anyways, we finally figured out that my shunt was affected again. So I was like, okay, that's no big deal. I'll go get my antibiotics, get a new shunt, and I'll be out back to work again. So after my surgery to get a new one, I had a complication and I had a big uh, brain bleed while I was unconscious for a month or two. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought I was in Florida and I thought I was alone. They put in my new shunt and everything sort of got back to normal. When I finally got to go home, I was like, I'm gonna be off for, you know, six or eight weeks and then I'm gonna go back to work. I went to the Miller Center and as soon as I went there, they set me up with the therapist there because she sort of grounds you again and sees how you are. I had a history of depression anyway first session I think she said well what are you what are you gonna do if you could never nurse again I was like well that's not gonna happen cuz I'm gonna get better and I'm going back to work like there there is no not nursing like that is who I am I am a nurse so I was at the Miller Center doing hot day hospital for I'd say two or three months seeing different therapists physio OT and they were all together on how are we going to make her remember things? Because I'd forget things, never remember what I had for breakfast, don't remember how I got places, who drove me here. Occupational therapist they sent me to, we couldn't find this fit. If I'd get too much stimulation in my brain, I'd have a seizure or I'd get migraines. Even just desk work they tried to get me to do. Uh, staring at a computer screen for too long gave me a seizure. Uh, so I was like, well, I can't even do not like a sit down job at a computer. And their biggest thing that really got to me is if you put someone on the toilet and you got called away, would you remember that they're on the toilet and go back? And I was like, I don't know if I would. Like, I don't know what would trigger me to remember. You have to go get them. Two years later, they finally had a meeting that I am unemployable and I will never work as a nurse. You know, all this time that this has been going on, I always knew that 
Jesus was always there. And it was just a matter of me going back to him and making the effort to, you know, reach out. I always have worship music playing at home, whether I'm cooking or cleaning or just sitting around doing nothing. Like, there, there, I just always have something positive in the background. If you're battling with mental health, I would say to reach out to someone, a friend or your parents or your pastor or your doctor, you're a professional somewhere. Find someone, like Christians do battle with mental health and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not that you're not praying enough. Since COVID has come, obviously we had a big chunk there where there was no church and church was online. And so I've been listening to multiple different churches every week. And uh, yeah, just big thing is worship music playing all the time so that it distracts me. Cause uh, my therapist says like, you need to distract yourself from letting the bad things in. Clinging to your faith is important. It doesn't turn anybody away. It doesn't matter who you are. We care so much about our viewers. You guys are the whole reason why we do this show. And that's why we love to hear from you. Perhaps something you've heard on the program really resonated with you, or maybe you have a suggestion for us. Well, we encourage you to stop by our website and send us a message, or we can always be reached through social media. And by following us on social media, you can keep up to date with what's happening here each week. Still to come on today's show, To The Point with Ralph Benson and more music from Crystal Snow when Heart Matters returns. From envelopes to tractor trailer loads, Dooley's Trucking caters to all your shipping needs. Capable of meeting all your shipping requirements throughout Newfoundland. Dooley's Trucking is your choice for fast and efficient delivery. Ship with the best, ship Dooley's. Christian Radio based in Mount Pearl is heard across Newfoundland and Labrador. With Faith, Hope, Family, it's your Christian station, VOAR. Christmas brings back so many memories for most of us. Our memories of Christmas are not about the gifts, but the people close to us. I can't say I remember the specific gifts that I unwrapped on Christmas morning, but I do remember my mom and the smell of turkey. I do remember my dad cutting a Christmas tree and bringing it into the house and the smells that go with that. I remember the people who came to our house at Christmas. Some of the guys in Come By Chance could play the guitar and sing I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas just as good as Elvis Presley. Oh yes, I remember all the family around the table. It was awesome. Memories are never built around things. They're always built around relationships, people in your lives. Life is all about that. Christmas is all about relationship, not just with each other, but with the ultimate relationship with our Creator, 
God came down to earth the first Christmas morning to build a relationship with us. The Christmas story in Matthew concludes by saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, shall bear a son, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God is with us. Do you have God with you for Christmas? I don't mean do you go to church during the Christmas season. I mean, do you have a relationship with the eternal God? He came to be with you. Christmas is his plan to be in a loving relationship with mankind. He didn't come just to spend one Christmas with us and provide a nice memory of Christmas programs where you become a shepherd or, or a wise man. He came so you would become his child. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It is the gift of life. God did not create us to function well apart from other people, and he did not create us to function well without him. We need each other, but our greatest need is God. When will this world realize all it needed was God? We are living in a dark time. People are hurting. There are more fears and anxiety in our world than at any other time in history. I am so thankful in 2020 to know that God is with me. Ralph Benson, born and come by chance on that little isthmus of the Avalon Peninsula. Jesus came down to me. I was accepted into his family. I became a child of God. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Yes, that included me. I remember the moment when I knew that God was not a faraway fictional figure or just a nice story at Christmas. He became my Savior. He has been with me every day, in the good times and the bad. He never leaves. He will never leave me. I don't fear the future or wonder what the future holds. My future will not be determined by the economy, the crisis of our world, or even by the grave. This relationship with God will never be just a memory. He gave me the gift of eternal life. I will be with him forever. Revelation 21 says, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God forever and ever. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, I pray you will come to know him as your Savior. It is then you will understand the meaning of Emmanuel and the truth of Christmas because you will know that God is with you and he will be with you always. Merry Christmas.
I believe that one of the most incredible hope-giving revelations that you can grab onto today is that God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means. God saw that humanity was making a mess of itself and he came down to us in the form of Jesus Christ. He experienced the pain and anxieties of life here on earth and now dwells within us through his Holy Spirit. So when you experience challenging circumstances like Amanda Carter did, you can find comfort and stability through the Holy Spirit. I want to thank Amanda for being vulnerable enough to share her story. And if you find yourself dealing with mental health issues during this season, please don't suffer alone. Reach out to a friend, a minister, a health professional. You may feel alone, but I assure you that there are people who care about you and want to help. Well, we've sadly reached the end of our time together for this show, but we invite you back again next week for our annual Christmas musical special. You won't want to miss it. See you next week.